Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Thursday, April 23rd, 2009. This morning I thought I'd do a small walkthrough of a small web velocity application I've been working on. Let me give you a brief idea what it does. I'll go here to Media Search, which is the one I've been building, and I'll go to Browse, MediaSearch.html, and that'll give me the entry point to the application. Now this is just in the default view that, op that uh, web velocity gives you, and there are various themes I could attach to this, but for now let's just take a look at the behavior. Notice how this field here has been customized to be a link back to the actual MP3 for this podcast. Over here, this has been customized to be a link to the show notes for that podcast. And then over here, I put the date, and then finally over here, I put the tags. And these are links you see down below, it says JavaScript, to searches by tag. So if I do that, I get that. If I do all, I get everything. If I say, well, have I ever done any screencasts or podcasts on Strong Talk or that mention Strong Talk? Well, it turns out that they've come up a couple of times. For instance, this interview with David Griswold. So I can go to the show notes, and there's the podcast. So kind of an interesting little application. Gives you a brief way of looking at all the podcast media and screencast media I've done, and I intend to post this online. What I thought I'd do is walk through how some of this stuff happened. How did I make these customizations here so that these things showed up? How did I change things so that the headers posted this way instead of by the variable names? All that kind of stuff. So let's go over here to the source code. Let's go to class media list UI and we'll go to the source code. Now you'll notice if we scroll down here into the rendering, I've got a bunch of render methods and here render details on the only change I made to this. Let's go up to visibility, go to generic collection UI and you find here I've got the inherited render details and then I've got mine. The only real difference between the two is I put this ID on. Now you might wonder why did I do that? Well it's because I'm doing a JavaScript enabled update to that portion of the screen, so I needed to give it an ID so that when the JavaScript renderer goes back to the back end and updates, it knows which part of the screen to rewrite. So that's a straight subclass override. More interesting is all of these methods like render heading media tags on. Let's scroll the visibility down so that you're not overwhelmed with all the stuff. Let's go here. I've got things like this. I can override render heading media tag so that instead of seeing media tags here, I see tags, and so on for render heading notes link. Instead of notes link, I get just notes. So you see I've overridden these things, and you might wonder again, how did I know to create a method called render heading media tags on, render heading notes link on, and then down here for the actual data, render object post date colon on colon. How do I know how to do that? Well, again, we go up to visibility, and we scroll up here to generic UI. We go all the way up to the top of this little chain of the web velocity methods. And if you scroll down here, you will find eventually you get to a method called render table body on and render table header on. And if you look at these, you see there's a reference to render headings on and render objects on. Let's look at headings. We scroll up and we see this render headings on, which goes in here and then does this table heading class with the variable name and render heading. So you see how that works. And if you come down here to render objects on, you see how the customization works for this. We do objects, we iterate through and do render object colon index. So we scroll up here and we find that eventually goes to this method. And you see there's a whole bunch of variations of things we can override depending on what we want. We can implement our own version of these methods and it puts these together and performs them. And then they'll be executed if we implement them. If we don't, it just does the default display by variable name and by the print string of that content. So we can customize this any way we want. I go to visibility, scroll this back down so that we're looking at less stuff. And that's how I know that I can implement render heading camel cased name of meth of uh, variable on colon and then here for the actual object that I want to put into the content render object and then camel case first letter of the variable and then I get the object coming in here and then HTML the thing to render it on so then I can tell it HTML text the timestamp as a date print string instead of getting a big timestamp for something that really doesn't have that data associated with it in the case of this database I just get the date as I want it. So that's customization of various things you can do and you can come through and get a view that looks like this. Now another thing you can do that's pretty cheap is you might say well this is kind of a boring look for this let's change the way it looks. So let's go here to media search and we'll go to up here to media search we'll go to themes 
And see right now we've selected default. Let's select Ragged Shore and see how that looks. We'll come over and do a Browse, Media Search, relaunch it. And you see we get this kind of thing with this picture up here and then it's a little bigger, but it's also a little different looking. And if I come over here, I can change the theme to something like Seaside. And I might take a look at that, Browse, Media Search. And you see this looks a little different. Now the difficulty here is, of course, this is a little hard to read and this takes up an awful lot of space. So I might think, well, that theme's not working out so well for me. This one's okay. This one reads pretty easy. So these are not the only choices you have, though. It turns out that if you go into the system, you'll find that these are nothing but file libraries and you can add your own. If you have somebody that knows CSS, you have that person work on the CSS for you, give you the graphics, you import those into Seaside, and then you have all these themes available to you. So you can add to this theme library and add your own themes that are application specific or generic and have more than just this list to pick from. So kind of a brief overview of how you do things in Web Velocity and some of the cool things you can do. Again, let's go back to Media List UI in order to change the customizations of the way things show up. One other thing I should go through, you notice that when I go here, I only have a few of the variables listed here. I don't have everything. And that turns out to come from the domain itself. So if I go to media and I scroll down, you'll find here in the class methods, there is a variable names method. I can tell it which things to bring back and display by customizing this method. And that way, if I have additional variables that are in the database that I don't really care about from the standpoint of displaying this to the end user, which in this case I don't, then I can customize this list and only bring back what I care about, omitting the stuff that isn't really relevant to me. So we'll pretty much leave it there for today. Until next time, have fun with Smalltalk.